Okay, so hello and welcome to uh, this video tutorial for Engineering Mechanics Statics by R.C. Hibbler. So we have this problem from chapter two of the textbook that states, uh, if the resultant force acting on the bracket is to be 750 newtons directed along the positive x-axis, determine the magnitude of F uh, and its direction theta. So um, this problem may introduce students to a added kind of complexity or, or complication really uh, to uh, when compared to some of the previous fundamental problems in this chapter. Let's go ahead and do what we'd normally do. Uh, so let's sketch a free body diagram here. Uh, so we've got this 325 Newton force acting up here. We've got this force F acting in the top right. We've got this 600 Newton force acting in the bottom right. Let's add some geometry to this. So uh, we've got this 5, 12, 13 triangle here. 5, 12, 13. Uh, let's add our x-axis. Let's add this 30, this theta uh, degree angle uh, and this 45 degree angle. And let's add the magnitudes of these forces. So we've got 325, we've got F, and we've got 600. Okay, so I believe this is all the information we need. Let's go ahead then and resolve horizontally. So the sum of the forces in the X, we can say here, um, well, first of all, let's take a step back actually and remind ourselves what's actually going on in this problem. It states, if the resultant force acting on the bracket is to be 750 newtons, so what that's basically saying is, when I add up all the, of these three forces together, the result is a, a, a 750 newton force uh, acting along the x-axis, essentially. So this is our uh, resultant force. Let's call it F subscript R. Okay. Um, I don't know how to, there we go, still getting used to one note. So uh, that's what the problem is saying. We can therefore say then uh, that, uh, or we can infer that the sum of the forces in the X are equal to seven, 750, and that the sum of the forces in the Y are equal to zero, right? Because the resultant force doesn't have any up or down component. Uh, we can therefore say then, that 750 is equal to all of the horizontal components added together. So that would be 5 thirteenths of 325. Oops. Um, plus F cos theta plus 600 cos 45. Six hundred cost forty-five. Apologies. Right. Okay, uh, is this solvable? No, uh, evidently not. Since we have two unknowns, we've got f and theta here. Um, since this is the case, let's move on uh, to uh, the vertical here. So we can say that zero, the sum of the vertical components, is equal to uh, twelve thirteenths of three hundred twenty-five up um, plus f f sine of theta um, minus 600 sine 45 okay um, is this problem solvable now based on what we've written down evidently yes right since uh, we have two independent equations here, this one and this one, and two unknowns, f and theta. So, so typically, when you have as many uh, independent equations as you do unknowns in a problem, the problem is solvable. Um, let's go ahead and start off by simplifying uh, this problem. Let's take our first equation here that says 750 is equal to blah, 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 blah. Uh, 
what we can do is we can take, we can subtract this 5 thirteenths of 325 and this 600, 600 cost 45. We can subtract those terms over to the left-hand side and then numericize it. So that would just involve typing 750 minus 5 thirteenths, 325 minus 600 and cost 45. Uh, and that gives us a value. If I check my notes real quick, that gives us a value of 200 points. Let's write that over here. So we can say 200.7 is equal to F cos of theta. Hopefully you guys have followed along there. Uh, we can also simplify our second equation. Uh, we can uh, subtract this 12 thirteenths of 325 over to the left hand side and we can add this 600 sine 45 over to the left hand side. Uh, what that ends up giving us is uh, 124.3 is equal to F sine of theta. Okay. Evidently, dealing with this down here is easier than dealing with this up here. So we've simplified the problem down a little bit. Um, and this becomes a very simple simultaneous equation at this point. Well, I say very simple. Uh, because maybe for some students, it may not feel so simple since this theta term is seemingly trapped, right, in... Um, the first equation is seemingly trapped inside of a cost function. And in the second equation, it's trapped inside of a sine function. Ooh, okay, what's going on here? So what we can do is we can do what we might typically do for a substitution method um, when solving simultaneous equations. We can express one unknown in terms of the other unknown. Let's express F in terms of theta. Let's take this first equation here. We can rearrange it. We can say F is equal to 200.7 over cos theta. We can then take this term for F and substitute it in for F into our second equation. And what that will leave us with is 124.3 is equal to uh, 200 sine theta over cos theta. Some students may recognize what I'm about to do, some may not. What we have here is an example of what we would call a trigonometric identity. Uh, I believe it might be called the quotient identity, uh, which basically says the following. Uh, so the quotient ident identity says that for any value theta, uh, tan of theta is equivalent to the sine of theta over the cos of theta. So we could rewrite this and we could say 124.3 is equal to 200 tan theta. 200.7. Let's just reintroduce that 0.7 <laughs> uh, tan theta. Apologies for that. Okay, uh, all of a sudden this is pretty simple, right? We can rearrange uh, this 124.3 equals 200.7 tan theta, and we can uh, get the following. We can say uh, that theta is equal to the inverse tan of uh, 124.3 all over, uh, over 200. Point seven, uh, which gives us a value for theta of 31.8 degrees. Okay, have we, uh, are we done? No, uh, the, 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 the problem's also asking for the magnitude of F, this force here, let's just move my face. Uh, okay, uh, conveniently, as is, Often the case when using the substitution method for solving simultaneous equations, we have a ready-made equation here, which gives us F in terms of theta. And we've just determined theta, it's 31.8. So we can say then that F is equal to 200.7 over the cos of 31.8.
uh, which gives us a value of 236.1. Um, what's the unit here? Newtons. Okay, 236.1 Newtons. Amazing. So uh, 31.8 degrees uh, and 236.1 Newtons. They, these are the solutions to our problem here. If you have any uh, questions or comments about this problem, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching.